So for all three of these reactions, we had this very simple reaction scheme, this, this reactant A goes to product P, and then we just assumed that A was a zeroth order, a first order, and a second order, and we were able to get integrated rate law expressions again that predict the concentration of A as a function of time. But not every reaction is going to be this simple, and so let's do one that's slightly more complicated, where we're going to think of this process now where we have two reactants, A plus B, that go to some product P, and what we're going to assume that both A and B are both of order 1. And so then we're going to determine the integrated rate law expression so that we can predict the concentrations of A and B at any time t. So the first thing that we're going to do is just write out our rate law expression. And we're going to write this in terms of the rate of change of A. So we've got minus dA by dt, and that's equal to my rate law expression, kf times the concentration of A raised to the power of 1 times the concentration of B raised to the power of 1. And so right away, I have two variables that change in time. I have my B and my A. And so what I need to do then is I need to write this in terms of only one variable so that I can do this integral very easily. And so what we're going to do then is we're going to let the concentration of A be equal to the concentration of A naught, meaning our initial concentration, and this value is static. It's a constant. And we're going to subtract off some value x meaning it's going to be some amount as time goes on, x is going to get bigger, which means our a is going to get smaller, and that makes sense because we're consuming a. We're also going to let b be equal to some initial concentration b0, which is something that we know, and we're going to subtract off the same x. And so this x, again, it represents basically the, the progress of the reaction, and since in our expression here, the moles of A, like one mole of A plus one mole of B gives you a mole of P, then I can basically subtract off X from both these expressions and I'm going to get um, an effective way to measure the concentration where I now only have one variable, where I only have this X that's changing in time because these other two values, the A naught and the B naught, these things are constant. So if I plug those things back into my free law expression here, I'm going to have minus D I have a concentration of A, so this is the concentration of A0 now, minus X by DT. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have KF times A0 minus X, concentration of B0 minus X. On my left-hand side, well, if I take the derivative of A0 minus X with respect to time, well, A0 is a constant, so what I end up with is just dx by dt, my minuses cancel out on this side, and on my right hand side I'm going to get kf concentration of a0 minus x, concentration of b0 minus x. And so now you can see that by doing this change of variables where I now write things in terms of x, I now have an expression, which is this guy right here, that is only in terms of one variable, it's only in terms of x, which means that now I have a single variable um, differential equation or a single variable expression that now I can then just integrate simply. So now let's follow the same process that we followed before where we're going to separate our variables, meaning that we're going to try to group together like variables on the same side of the equation. That means that on my left hand side I'm going to have dx, I'm going to move all these terms with x to the left hand side, so I'm going to have in the denominator a0 minus x times b0 minus x. And on my right hand side, I'm going to have kf times dt. And so now here on my left hand side, I have this expression where I have the product of two polynomials. And instead of multiplying them together, I'm going to use a slightly different approach where I'm going to try to simplify this expression into easier integrals to do by doing something called a common fraction. And all this means is that I'm just going to try to separate this denominator in such a way that I get only one of these polynomials in the denominator. And I'm going to have a summation of, of these two terms. And what that looks like essentially is that if I have some expression, let's say x times y or 1 over x times y, then I can come up with something where I would have some expression that looks like this, where I have some number on top divided by x plus some number on top um, divided by y. And again, this is just a way to separate this denominator out so that I have a simpler expression to integrate. So the way we do this is 
we're going to write out an expression where we're going to say concentration of A naught minus X, concentration of B naught minus X. We're going to have the one over it because we're not going to include the, the DX on top because that'll just multiply with, against whatever we determine here. And that's going to be equal to something where we have some number on top divided by the concentration of A naught minus X times the concentration of B naught minus X over the concentration of B naught minus X. And to that we're going to add some value Y, which we'll determine over the concentration of B naught minus X. And that we have multiplied by the concentration of A naught minus X divided by the concentration of A naught minus X. And so you can see that in this case I have on both these terms on my right hand side I have A naught minus X times B naught minus X which gives us our exact same denominator here and it's just on top what we need to determine if we want to split these two things up is we just need to figure out what is W and what is Y. And so to do this we're going to then just simply write out two equations and two unknowns. We're going to write out um, a couple of expressions that we can then easily solve. What we can see here for the denominators again, all the denominators are the same, but all the numerators, that's where things are going to be different. And so we can write then one of our two expressions to just be simply one is equal to W times the concentration of B naught minus X plus Y times the concentration of A naught minus X. And what we can do then is we can actually start to distribute in these, this W and this Y, which again are just values that we're going to have that are going to be the numerators for our separated um, fractions. We're going to have W times the concentration of B naught minus W X plus Y concentration of A naught minus Y X. And if I group together some of my terms again, my X terms at least, I have 1 is equal to W concentration of B naught plus Y times the concentration of A naught. From that I can subtract off X and I'm going to get W plus Y. And so this is where I'm going to essentially get my two equations and my two to be able to solve for these two unknowns. In this first case we can see here that on my left hand side if I were to write it out explicitly I have 0 times x plus 1, meaning I have no terms in x and I have some value 1. On my right hand side here, I have an expression that has to deal with x. And for the left hand side to equal the right hand side, that means this expression that has x in it has to be equal to 0, meaning that w plus y must equal to 0. So this is our first expression, w plus y is equal to 0. My second, or the, my second equation I'm going to get from here comes from the first part of this equation where on my right hand side I only have the value of 1, which means that this w times b naught plus y times a naught has to equal 1. And so that becomes my second expression, w times b naught plus y times a naught, that has to equal to 1. And so that's the only way that this whole expression that we're looking at from before that's the only way that this will be consistent with the original expression that we had in our um, integrated rate law expression that we're trying to solve. So then let's now solve for w and y. That means what I'm going to start with is with equation 1 I'm going to solve for y. So here I've got w plus y is equal to 0. If I solve for y then what I get is that it's equal to negative w. I can then go to my second expression and I can plug in now for y I'm going to write minus w which means that the original expression w times b naught plus y times a naught is equal to 1. Well in this case again I'm going to substitute in any time I see y I'm going to write in minus w. So there I've got w times b naught minus w times a naught and that's still sorry I'm writing it equal to 0 this should be equal to 1 I can distribute out a W, so I'm going to have W 
is equal to concentration of B naught, or W times the concentration of B naught minus the concentration of A naught is equal to one. That means my W is equal to one over the concentration of B naught minus the concentration of A naught. And so what that then allows me to do is to go back to my equation one and I can substitute this back in and that then tells me that my Y in this case is equal to negative one over the concentration of B naught minus the concentration of A naught.